Dear friends, um, I have uh, been taking a, a, a break from posting uh, videos because I'm working on uh, my second book and it is taking me um, all my energy. So, but um, I want to um, I want to continue with this video, uh, with this uh, uh, demonstration, um, the um, Renaissance series. So this uh, video will be about uh, um, how to um, um, move from the skeletal structure on to the muscles and then eventually the clothes. Uh, this is a tradition that uh, started in the Renaissance, a, a technique, a method that started during the Renaissance. And I found this uh, drawing, this sketch by Raphael, or Raffaello, as we say in Italy, and it shows exactly that method. So it shows that clearly you see this is a un compianto, like a, una pietà, uh, with Mary holding the dead Christ, right? And Raffaello started drawing the skeleton of Christ, see that? Um, just to make sure, just to make sure that uh, the... Um, uh, body was correctly represented the way uh, it was falling the way it was uh, the, the way the Mary was holding the proportion and everything so let's start with uh, um, creating a similar um, a similar pose right um, where we create first a skeleton and then over the skeleton I'm going to um, layer the muscle so I am starting with um, with the rib cage. Right? Let me copy this a bit just to have an inspiration. With the rib cage, um, I I like to start with rib cage. You can start with um, whatever you want, but uh, I would it, it, I would start with uh, um, any of the um, parts of the axial skeleton, meaning either the rib cage or the head or the pelvis. I like the rib cage because it is a uh, it is a big vo uh, volume, it is dominant, and um, uh, the other parts kind of follow the volume, the rib cage, because it's, it's the biggest form. So I start drawing an egg, see that? And then I kind of sculpt it a little bit more. I find uh, the details, like the sternum, and um, <clears throat> the costal arch, the head, I need to block in the head. So the rib cage is about, um, in terms of size, relative size, is about uh, uh, one and a half heads in terms of measure. So once I have the measure of the rib cage, I kind of, you know, eyeball the size of the, and it kind of looks good, right? It kind of looks good. It's a little bit lot bigger than the one and a half, right? So I block in now the volume of the head, about one and a half heads, and uh, <clears throat> Connect this with uh, uh, connect the head with the with the rib cage via the spine, right? And um, step back quickly. Uh, when I put the sternum in, I want to make sure that uh, the length of the sternum is not as big as the measurement of the head. Um, that's pretty good, like about seven eighths of the head or uh, three quarters of the head, but it is not as big as the head. So now <clears throat> in here I have the spine, and I see uh, I can imagine a little bit of a of a um, uh, relaxed spine, relaxed uh, twist like this, right, uh, of the lumbar spine, and uh, connected with the lumbar spine, I can block in the the the, the pelvis, right. So the width of the pelvis is going to be about the same. Uh, oh, is my eraser? The same uh, width as the rib cage in uh, in male. So if I can enlarge it a little bit, I can move it here. I so um, so the the pelvis is a bucket, right? I block in my bucket in here. And then the, the the width is the same as the rib cage, right? And the height is about the same as the head, so I'm happy with that, right? Um, so as I draw, see, I'm going to check, keep checking 
the proportional relationship of uh, the various segments. So now I know that head, rib cage, and pelvis are proportioned um, uh, in relation to each other, right? I'm mean, talking about typical proportion. Of course, if I had to draw a, um, a specific human figure, like a specific model, I would look at the, at the specific sizes of, of the um, uh, of my model, right? So at the lower quarter, I have the pubic bone, right? And then uh, the, the um, sockets are going to be um, just above, the, 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 that is the, 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 the joint, the, the joint in here of the head, the femurs, like the hips are going to be um, starting at the level of the pubic bone, which is at the lower quarter uh, of the total height of the pelvis. Um, blocking in the legs, right? So I see I find the joint because I want to connect the pelvis properly uh, with, uh, I mean, the, the femur properly with, with, the, with the hips, right? So once I found the starting point of the femur, I can just look at the angle of the femur, right? And um, the length of the femur, starting from the top of the head of the femur to the, the knee is about two heads. So I take my head in here, so one, two, and then, <clears throat> I block in here the uh, the distal epiphysis, which is the the distal the distant portion of the femur. So from here, now I could also position the other um, femur right here, and um, maybe I make the legs a little bit convergent, try right? a little bit convergent. So you see what I'm doing. Any time, every time I make a mark, I draw a part of the body, I want to um, think about it. I want to see how is this proportion related, proportionate to this part in here, how is this oriented uh, in relation to the body, in relation to the other leg, etc, etc. It seems like tedious, but it's really not. It, uh, it just, uh, um, um, you just have to get used to it a little bit and then it will become automatic. So now when I block in, let's say, the tibia, right? Um, it should be fitting, yeah, it fits. When I block in the tibia, uh, I want to remember that the the length of the tibia and the foot, or the tib sorry, lower leg and the foot is about two heads. So one and two, so maybe that is coming out. So let me, um, actually, let me see, maybe it fits, right? Tibia and fibula, right? So, lower leg and foot are about two heads, right? Um, so you're thinking, did these guys, the Renaissance, really go through all those steps? Yes, that's the answer, right? So, um, so now when I draw, let's say for example, um, these two segment of the leg, um, femur and, and tibia, I want to, um, when it, for example, I had the femur, that's the starting point, I want to see now um, what angle is the, the lower leg in relation to the femur. Oh look, it's about 90 degrees. So now when I do that, if I interpret it, I give it the measurement, it is um, easier to uh, draw correctly. Now, starting from uh, maybe here, right, I want still to have the same proportional relationship between the two. There's not much distortion coming from the perspective in here because it's fairly or for shortening, right? And maybe this leg is going to be slightly converging in relation to this other leg, but the length is going to be similar, right? So, and those are the feet. Now, we go back to we go back to the top in here and we see how maybe I could block in the planes of the head just to have an idea of um, <clears throat> um, of the uh, where to position where to position the facial features right right here maybe high a little bit high here right so this head is too this face is too small I'm gonna lift it a little bit right 
eyes are going to be here. That looks better, right? So now, um, nose is here. Um, so now, <clears throat> clavicles. So when I block in the clavicle, they're going to start from the, the top of the um, sternum. And uh, <clears throat> I want to look at the orientation. <clears throat> How do I do that? Well, um, compare it to an horizontal line, for example, right? And you can you, you can do this. In fact, in fact, I encourage you to do this when you draw from life, right? So compared to the horizontal line, see that angle there, right? And um, you can tell it's not 45, it's a little bit less than that, but I am visualizing an angle. I'm not gonna go after this angle because I can make mistakes. Having a reference here, is um, which is either the horizontal line or the vertical line, is much easier, right? So now, <clears throat> At the end of the um, clavicle, I have the acromion connecting with the clavicle. And now maybe this uh, clavicle is uh, moving up like this, right? So the clavicles can be uh, no, um, one going in one direction, one going in another direction, depending if you lift the arm or not, right? So now I see this: the face is here, it's kind of leaning against the, the shoulder, the deltoid, right? And so now I'm going to position the head of the humerus, which is going to be just under the uh, distal portion of the clavicle, which is the acromion. So here, right? And then this other arm in here is going to be positioned here, right? And now I want to block down the length of the humerus. But see what I'm doing first, blocking the axial skeleton, right? Uh, because it is the, this is the dominant form. And then uh, from here, what you want to do, uh, blocking the legs, because they are, they are a big form, right? And typically they have the contact with the ground. <clears throat> but, you know, the contact with the ground in this case is relative because uh, uh, the figure of Jesus is very uh, passive, right? He's, uh, so um, then, then I put the arms in. But I'm going to put the arms over, like over, the uh, structure of the um, uh, axial skeleton, which I have established. So <clears throat> now let's say uh, the length of the humerus is about the same length as the rib cage, but because it starts a little bit lower, then it ends up a little bit lower, right? So <clears throat> about the same length of the of the rib cage, and it ends up at the waist or close to close to the iliac crest. I can, I can do this consideration because uh, uh, this figure is fairly um, frontal. There's not much uh, foreshortening. So um, I can compare this measurement to each other using the typical measurement. If I had instead a foreshortened pose, then that would be, that would be different, right? So, and considering now that this humerus in here, this, this, uh, humerus in here is higher, so the, the arm starts higher, so it's not going to be lined up as the same level as this. It's going to be a little bit higher, right? And now this arm is coming down. So now um, remember, um, remember the uh, progressive shortening of the segment of the arm as they move away from the center, where this is the longest, this is slightly shorter, and the hand now is also slightly shorter, right? So um, now this this arm in here, I'm gonna block it in here, over here, right? And then uh, um, and then eventually I could do, we could do the same thing with the Virgin Mary, but uh, which is here holding Christ. And, um, um, and we see that, um, we see that uh, Raphael also hinted at some of the anatomy of the Virgin Mary, the clavicles in here, and her humerus, and then the sternocleidomastoid. Uh, so, so these guys really knew, really knew anatomy very well. So, this is my first. Um, um, this is the first um, stage, right? Uh, so, the first stage is block in, uh, block in the uh, skeleton, right? And then um, block in the. Um, the muscles, and then um, and then the clothes, right? So, 
So this, this, at this stage in here, I don't have to be too precious, too, too precise in doing this because, um, uh, because um, eventually this portion here will disappear, right? Disappear. So I just, uh, this is just my thinking process. Where do I put things, right? So um, now, from here, now we're going to take a little break, right? And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to prepare the second part of the video with um, the, uh, when I'm going to put the muscles on top. OK, 